These are umbrella rigs that I made. Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Today I'm going to show you how I make these. It's so simple and it's a lot of fun. Here's one of those umbrella rigs that I made. This is the I think the very first one I made, uh, and it's a little rough, but you know what? It catches fish. Uh, let me show you how you make these. It's really simple. You can make it with very simple tools and some simple materials. First, let me show you what you're going to need. You're going to need some cutters, some needle nose pliers, some flat jaw pliers it are real handy too. You'll need some weights uh, and a variety of types. You can use any of these, either the egg, the bullet, or the little uh, split shots. You'll need stainless leader wire. This one's 124 pounds. I really have experimented a bunch with some different uh, grade dia uh, diameters and found that the 124 pounds is a pretty good sort of medium. First, you need to decide exactly how much wire you want to have. This is a very basic one that I made. It's uh, five strands. And the four at the very top kind of create the umbrella and then there's the straggler in the back that usually gets hit. So let me show you the lengths you'll need. You're gonna need two pieces, approximately nine inches each. So what I'll do is I'll cut one. And then I'll measure. So we've got two that are nine inches. And then if you want a fifth, a trailer, now I've made the simplest form. So here's a little bit of a better background. And you can see it's very simple, straightforward, four strands. So you'll have four lures hanging off the back. Realistically, you don't have to have a fifth, but I like to have that last trailing one. And cut one more, and that one, only needs to be seven inches. Of course, you can modify these lengths to your taste. Of course, the longer you make them, the heavier wire you're gonna make because if not, they start to kind of bow back against themselves as you're trolling with them or, or reeling them back. Well, the next step is to take, and this is where, this is the only part that's a little bit of a challenge. So you take your two nine inchers and you want to find the center, which is four and a half inches. That I'm holding about an inch from the center. I'm going to grab a pair of uh, locking pliers, and I've taken and taking a taking a small file to this edge just to make sure it doesn't have like a real sharp edge because it will mar your metal and pinch it down. Don't put too much tension on it; it doesn't need it. Put it in my vise. about two inches from those jaws and again these measurements you can eyeball them it doesn't have to be exact so I'm going to use my handy twisting tool and I'm going to start to twist about right you see how it's tight but it's not crazy tight it doesn't start to look like thread this is the effect you have you've got a center twist now we do our, our typical eye loop in the center this is where it's, you're actually going to tie on to so i'm going to do it right at the center as best i can right about there and just go ahead and give it a tweak bring it around and i'm going to try to do a little offset shoulder on it so you get a nice little kind of effect like that you get a nice symmetric with the shoulder that's actually the main structure right now all we got to do is add the uh the little extras now if if you're going to leave it with only four legs, just like this, you don't have to do the next step. I do want to add, I'm going to show you how I add the trailing, the straggler leg. Uh, and it, it's not hard, but it just adds one more little step. So I'll do what I usually do with my little bender tool, stick it in the vise. I'll go ahead and set the eye in there. And I just want to give it one twist. That's all I want. I just want one twist out. You can do this with a pair of regular pliers if you want to. 
and then I'm going to just give it a twist. And I'm doing this by hand since I don't really need to get a whole lot on it. You can see it gets a little warped. You can just take it back, clean it back up. Right, so you want to go ahead and take that, the longer piece and bend it over a round edge. You don't want to get too tight a bend on it because you will snap it like I did this one about five minutes ago. So that should do it. You see it goes 180 and then you want to poke it through and get it to, to line up there. Okay, if it's a little long you can always snip the end so it doesn't stick out beyond where the lead's going to be. And that does it. Okay, so the next thing you need to do is to get a piece of lead that'll fit over everything. Now, it doesn't always happen that you got a big uh, opening in your in your lead like this one has. If, and if you don't, you can always take a drill bit to it. I'm going to open this up just a little more and then I'll come back to it. Next challenge, slide it up in here. And so, if you're going to do it with a split shot, just be certain that you have the right location. You've got enough room to get everything in that split shot. Since you real, don't really drill it out, you've got to kind of open it up. So I'm going to straighten this out a little bit. Give me a hard time. So and then you just slide it up. And you can see that hides everything. You can do. You can go two directions here. You can stick with just the round. You can see this is a nice big one. You can stick with just the round shape or you can flatten it and I, I kind of like flatten it, flattening it you can see this is one that I flattened and then I gave it kind of a fancy paint job but with this one I think I'm just gonna stick to this the holes you have left in here you got a couple of ways you can fill them the best way is to fill it with epoxy but you can also do it with some crazy glue and accelerator what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to fill it with crazy glue and I'm going to do my best to make it look good. There it is. You can see that that tip is filled up. Now you can do this with regular paint. If you've got an airbrush, you can do that. Or if you just got spray paint, you know, Krylon or whatever, you can spray it down, let it dry, give it a few hours to dry, put some eyes on it and clear coat it. And it looks actually almost as good. Let me show you the results of the one we just made. I did this one and I apologize I didn't show it because the, the battery shut off on me on the camera. And so I have this other one. This one is slightly different. Uh, the same dimensions for everything. But what I did was I put a split shot on there and just flattened it out. So first, first things first, I'm gonna take and put a little alcohol. It's actually denatured alcohol. Um, I'm gonna heat it up. You don't have to get it blazing hot. Warm it up, and then you just sort of dredge it in here. And you can see it's got a pretty good coating. And now I can hit it. And I like to face it down so if it starts to sort of move a little bit on me, it'll go towards the eye. Comparatively, it's sort of purple. That means it's really hot. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and dip it again. So let's uh, cook this on. This is going to take a few coats. It'll probably take, I want to say four coats. So now you get to see how it really fills things in and makes it look uniform. That's how the long wire came out to one side. Don't sweat that too much. You may have visualized yours having that long one coming straight out of the center. Really, when you begin to bend these out, uh, you can actually make them do whatever you want. Time to put the eyes on these heads. I'm going to do the first one by hand. Uh, so if you've got, I, I highly recommend getting one of these pair of pliers if you're going to be bending wire. What you want to do is let a little bit, like a maybe about a half inch, three eighths to a half inch overhang out beyond this. You give it a bend and then you bring the standing edge over so that you don't eat up all your wire. In, the, in, in the, the length of the wire in the bend. And then I wanna go ahead and you're gonna notice, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this around and pull this standing end around and we'll cross them again. So, like so. And now I've got them crossed. At this point, 
I like to actually put a shoulder in it so there's a little bit of a kind of like a uniform eye and, that, and then you can put the twist in so put the twist in you give this a little bit of a squared bend I don't know if you can see that where I bent it over and then you really only need one one and a half turns on the shaft and then that's really all you need nothing else is going to come off and you can see how nice and neat that eye comes out you can give it another half turn uh, depends I mean if you're fishing for if you're making one for bass give it a, two turns for crappie one one and a half is more than a half more than enough so I'm going to go ahead and just give this thing another half turn there it is and then you just take a pair of pliers angle cutters and just pop off the excess he says okay from here what you want to do is put what I like to do is attach my lure with a split ring what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and twist all these I'm going to show you how I do it with the machine uh, and then we'll we'll have them done put it on here and you want to give yourself about a half inch sticking out from where this bending tab touches it and then bring it around you form the shoulder and as you can see uh, and then you put it on the, the twister and this is just kind of lazy man's way to do this and there you go two and a half wraps three wraps and that's all you need so i'm going to do the rest okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and give these a little bit of a highlight with some some paint just to show you that you can enhance them pretty quickly i'm going to use a little bit of black paint and my airbrush So the only thing left is to give it a little bit of a gloss coat. You can do that with spray. I'm going to go ahead and do it with some uh, spray. This gloss ultra cover, it's actually really good. Um, it dries super fast. It's easy to apply. I don't know, for this kind of thing, it, it's kind of hard to beat. I think everybody out there knows how to uh, spray with a spray can. I'll go ahead and just post some photographs at the end of this video. Thanks for watching The Engineered Angler. But be sure to check out the Facebook channel, Engineered Angler on Facebook. Uh, it's nice to check that out every now and then because it, it, it gives you an insight on what I'm working on, the kind of things that I'm trying to design like this kind of stuff. Uh, more, more lathe lures, more lures made out of epoxy, and more trips uh, to go catch fish. So thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.